Hello, and welcome to Discover History, a production of the History Center in Tompkins County um, on public access television. Today, I have Phyllis Smith Hansen with me to talk all things Ithaca Kitty. Don't know what the Ithaca Kitty is? Well, watch our little introductory clip to get a clue. Hello, I'm Gene Endress, volunteer at the History Center. Celia Smith, wife of an Ithaca attorney, got a patent in 1892 for a stuffed cloth toy cat. Around 1886, cloth dolls began to flourish due to the spread of home sewing machines. Smith and her sister-in-law, Charity, designed a two-piece doll for Celia's toddler, Madge. Now, inspired by their pet cat, Caesar, Celia made a three-piece cat that could stand up. Charity painted the design on cloth using a half yard of fabric. It sold for 10 cents following issue of the patent. The toy licensed to and printed by the Arnold Print Works of North Adams, Massachusetts, paid Celia one cent per yard. Celia made later designs, a set of kittens, a dog, a monkey, and a sailor. When five and 10 cent stores like Woolworth's became popular, one could buy a complete stuffed toy for the same 10 cents, and few took the trouble to actually make one. Welcome back, I hope you enjoyed that clip. And now I wanna dive into the Ithaca Kitty with Phyllis. Thank you for joining me, I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about uh, your passion for the Ithaca Kitty as a starting off point for us? Well, I can tell you that about three years ago, Rod Howe, your predecessor, <clears throat> who was a friend, came to me and told me the story of the Ithaca Kitty. I'd never heard of it before. And he said that up until about 1970, kits were sold in the gift store. And he was interested, and he showed me a panel, and he said he would like to reissue this. And could I think of a way that we could get this done? So I started digging through the archives and reading the story of the Ithaca Kitty, managed to locate a tiny little toy company in the Adirondacks, and amazingly, the man is quite elderly, but he's alive, and he, he uh, silk screened using six different screens, the Ithaca Kitty. I, not knowing a thing about anything related to silk screening, found in short order, nobody's doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I went everywhere. I went to both the university and the college. I talked to every artist I could find. And they said, no, 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 no. You need six different screens, and it would be hugely expensive, and nobody's doing that. And finally, somebody took pity on me and explained digital printing, which, I mean, I'm 70. I don't know about these things. And so <laughs> I, then I started looking for a digital printer. But in my looking through the archives, I found the picture of Caesar Grimalkin, who is the Ithaca Kitty. And here he is, clearly a polydactyl cat. And I turned the sample that Rod gave me upside down and found there are no extra toes on this mm -hmm. Ithaca Kitty. And I said to Rod, where's his toes? And Rod, of course, not being a kitty person, said he didn't know what I was talking about. And I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm glad to help you with this, but he's got, to, he's got to have his toes. So I went searching for a digital printer, found a very nice artist in Ithaca who was willing to sit down with me, spent a lot of time at his computer as I kept criticizing every possible picture until we managed to give Caesar Grimalkin his appropriate front feet. And how do I get fitted into this? Well, I'm a cat lady, first of all. I'm especially a polydactyl cat lady. And I'm a retired teacher. I've got a lot of time on my hands, and I really love doing community service. So this was right up my alley, and Rod knew that. So I, I talked a lot with Rod about how I felt like I wanted this to look, and I wanted this to be a, a true community building event. Partly because I would like to see the History Center become alive through our county in ways that it's not or hasn't been, and because I think in the world we're living in right now, having a community is the only thing that's gonna save us. So I said, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to 
call together any group of people that I can get, churches, fraternal organizations, friends of the library, Longview, Lifelong, student groups, and if, if they'll work with me, I will facilitate, I'll provide all the materials, and they make the kitties. Now the thing that's really great about this is there are jobs for everybody. You don't have to have a sewing machine. You need to have a panel that is cut out. So job number one for a person who is not a seamstress, mm -hmm. get a pair of scissors and cut out the kitty. There's number one. Then you have people with sewing machines who do the stitching, except they leave the back end open. And then you begin the stuffing process. And the stuffing, which is provided as a donation by me, um, the majority of it is wonderfully environmentally appropriate recycled soda bottles. Excellent. But it's incredibly slippery. And we wanted Caesar's ears to stand up. So I go to a young woman in my church who raises sheep and get real wool, <laughs> real wool um, from her sheep, and we stuff the ears. First, up, first thing we do, using the back end of a wooden spoon, we stuff the ears with real wool. And again, this is a great job for somebody not, who doesn't sew. And the kitty needs to be stuffed, and Rod's very, very firm about this. He wants this to be huggable. <laughs> so it should have nine ounces, I weighed it, nine ounces of stuffing. Then it goes to the person who hand stitches the opening shot and writes, in this case, Ithaca Kitty 2019. And believe it or not, that job is a beloved job. People really like to write that. And then, and then I bring them to the History Center, and they're sold in the gift store. And it's just, it's been enormous fun. I, I've had multi-age groups. I've had women with husbands dragging along behind. Um, but people have talked and laughed and worked together, and it's been great fun. Awesome. I think we see a lot today in terms of uh, toys and the things provided for children to play with that don't have connections to the past anymore. And it is so cool to see an example of something that uh, children in the 1900, early 1900s are able to play with that can still serve the same function and still have value today. Um, and I guess I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on, on that arc of how you know, something like the Ithaca Kitty can continue a through line and continue to be relevant even you know, without updating or changing the pattern or the materials that are going into it, though we have made some small changes to be more environmentally friendly. Well, I think, I think the thing that stands out the most to me is that, you know, we talk these days about wanting things to be made in America. Mm -hmm. This is more than just made in America. This is made in our community with volunteer hands. Yeah. Where else is that happening? Right. You know, this is, I can't imagine another production that's locally done like this. So to me, that is a very old way of thinking. It's the kind of thing, I often think when we have groups of people working together that this, is, this must be what a quilting bee was like mm. or a barn raising was like. These are times in the past when people came together to accomplish a goal. And we don't have that available to people anymore. Yeah. But this is that. This is people coming together to achieve a goal and to make something that is going to be loved um, and shared and popular and it's got its roots in the history of this kitty but in modern day it is supporting our history center and little piece that goes along with this somewhere in Rod and I got very excited about Caesar Grimalkin getting his toes back and we decided there's a story here and for a year, we searched for someone to write this story. We wanted a children's book. It's so timely. It's, it's so Ithaca and so timely to talk about differences and accepting differences. And when I went back through the history, 
<laughs> the photographer obviously took an accurate picture, but the toy company felt that it was unseemly to have those extra toes, and they said that. But of course, that's the middle of the 1800s. Mm -hmm. But today, we think differently. And so we finally, amazingly, uh, a young woman who, again, amazingly, is one of my former students, heard about our search and reached out to us and said, I'd love to write that book. And she's a successful author. She has two books already, very successful books that she's written. And she's now working on, she's written the book, and she's now working on finding someone to print this book. So this story of Caesar Grimalkin getting his toes is, is going to be, I think, a huge hit here in Ithaca. And it's going to be part of the sale of this kitty along with the book. And it's, it's just going to immortalize, I think, this cat. And I'm very happy to be part of that. So I want to come back both to the idea of community and to talk about the book in some more depth. Um, but before we do so, um, I'm going to have Donna, our archivist at the History Center, give you a little virtual tour of our new archive space in the Re Research Library. Hi, I'm Donna Eschenbrenner. I'm the archivist here at the History Center in Tompkins County. Welcome to the Cornell Local History Research Library. This is the place where people come when they want to access all the myriad information that we have contained in our archives. Our archival collections, our photo collections, our newspapers, our scrapbooks, all of those myriad things that we have that people use to research local history. This library is also, surprisingly, the place where people find things that are contained right here in this room. Behind me in those innocuous looking filing cabinets is one of our most heavily used collections. It's our genealogy collection. Genealogy is a particularly important topic for researchers in Tompkins County. It's probably the most heavily researched topic. The family files that we have there, files on more than 2,000 local and regional families, contain information that's been generated by research on local families. Most of it is correspondence between researchers and the staff here at the History Center. A lot of it dates back to the 1930s when we were just establishing the collection. As you can see here in front of me, some of the documents in some of these family files are old and faded themselves kind of artifacts. In addition to the correspondence that we have in these files, we have things that researchers have generously donated to us, like pages from family Bibles, which contain things like listings of birth and death records. We also have family pedigree charts or family trees. We have things like family newsletters. Some families are so interested in family genealogy that they create their own internal newsletters. In addition to all these things that we have in these family files, we have other materials that are particularly useful for genealogical searches, including census records and cemetery information. All of this is available in our research library Tuesdays through Saturdays from 11 to 5. Just come to the History Center in Tompkins County at the Tompkins Center for History and Culture and ask for the research library and we'll be happy to help you. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your virtual tour with Donna. Um, and so we're going to pick up where we left off talking about uh, really the community effort around making the kitties. And I know from uh, managing our sales that the Ithaca Kitty is our number one selling item through the History Center, by far and away the most popular. And given that demand, it's really incredible that you have helped bring together a community to help build and supply the History Center with our mascot. Um, and so uh, can you talk a little bit about how much effort goes into putting together these groups and where do people come from? Well, I'll start with the beginning because this hadn't existed and suddenly it's going to exist. We, Rod sent a letter out from the History Center that I helped him write to every kind of organization we could think of uh, explaining what we were hoping to accomplish. Sadly, we didn't get a great response from that. Meanwhile, I want kitties made. So 
several of the longtime board members, former board members of the, of, of the History Center, me, a group of my friends who are still speaking to me quite amazingly, <laughs> um, started pumping out kitties because we needed to get started and we didn't have any groups working. Um, then I started knocking on doors. I, start, I realized that the letters didn't get to the right hands and I was walking in to churches and to groups and um, little by little people started hearing about it from other people and um, that's how the Friends of the Library came to be. That was not even a group that I had contacted but they contacted me. Sometimes I get the phone calls, sometimes the History Center gets the phone calls, but one way or another it'll come back to me. Because I'm retired, I'm very flexible time-wise. Um, I have learned, it's a learning curve for me too, I, I have learned that it's, it's really important for me to tell the backstory. So we have this very wonderful, this was done by someone at the History Center, um, short version of the of the kitty with pictures and i will be going to uh, lifelong next month and i'm going to do a history story first and sign people up and then come back in three weeks with the volunteers and put it together that if people have the time to invest in that i think that's ideal because then people who show up know what they're going to be looking at mm -hmm. and they they know where they can fit in and how they can contribute plus the story needs to be told <laughs> and that is the connection to the history center yeah. so i have become a little bit of a historian in all of this and that's you know not what i was thinking i was doing i was thinking more about the crafting yeah but, um, community Let's yes, talk more about absolutely. the community, um, especially when Rebecca Berry, our author, um, was beginning to work on the book. It became apparent that we were going to need some money for this process of the book, although she's being incredibly generous with us. So we reached out to the Park Foundation for funding. Mm -hmm. and. In the involvement back and forth with the Park Foundation, it was clear that they were especially interested in the idea of community building. So I tried to explain where that was coming from mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the things that I've said to you already. They seemed very much wanting to support that idea of community building. Yeah. So for so many different reasons, um, all the things we've talked about, that I think brought us that grant um, and that has helped us tremendously. It's given us the money to, to have Rebecca get this book written and to have it out through an editor now being shopped around looking for someone to print it. Um, so there's a big, there's big support for the idea of community yeah. and the people who have worked in these groups have been incredibly happy with the experience. A lot of positive feedback. So that is sh slowly building out. And that's a good thing because really there were some weekends when Rod would call and say, we're out of kitties and I would pump out 20 kitties on a weekend or put together bags of materials for, for 10 kitties to the, the stalwart board members yeah. who were also able to pump out kitties. Um, or my friends who I don't think were answering the phone much anymore uh, to get kitties in an emergency to get kitties. Um, so coming into the History Center, it uh, was exciting for me to have, to know that Caesar sort of had become the unofficial mascot, and I think we're moving towards the official mascot yeah. of the History Center. And um, especially because he is a polydactyl cat. And uh, I am not a native son of Ithaca, but um, something that coming into the community here has been um, so incredibly welcoming is the sort of celebration of difference. And you know, there's as a communities, we always have work to do. But um, I think really the Im idea of embracing and celebrating what makes each of us unique builds a stronger community. And so the story from earlier of you know Caesar and the Ithaca Kitty had gotten edited to conform to what people's expectations of what a cat should be. Um, and yeah. so 
your, your story and your efforts to restore Caesar's toes um, as, as a way of embracing what makes each of us special, I think is especially resonant for me and um, is, is a strong uh, allegory or piece for uh, the, the stories that we are trying to capture at the History Center. Yep, um, and that's and, why we wanted to write the book. Yes, absolutely. Caesar Grimalkin. By the way, Grimalkin is a Victorian word for gray cat. Oh, I did not and, know and that. Excellent. Gray cat. You know, it's a perfect, perfect name. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think that it's it's very much an Ithaca story, but it's it's a universal 2019 story Absolutely. and growing all the time. Yes. So it's perfect. It's it it hits all the boxes. Yeah. Hits all the boxes. Uh, so, and maybe it's too soon, but are we hoping to see a book sometime end of 2020? Depends on publishers. Well, Ro Rod and I really had high hopes for Christmas, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think we're going to make it for Christmas. But yes, I certainly think soon. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. It, Rebecca has done a great job. And not only is it a story, of Caesar Grimalkin from the beginning to 2019 when he gets his toes, but it's going to have a compendium in the back with all of the historical data that's Excellent. related to this. So while it's a kid's book and it does extend the allegory in, into fantasy to some extent, it remains a history book because she's got a whole compendium in the back Excellent. of the historical data. So. Very cool. Both things. We hope that this will be a book that people will love to buy and read to their children and enjoy every page as they're reading it. Cool. So as, as we wrap up, if you're watching this and you'd like to become involved in the Ithaca Kitty uh, Sewing Projects, I encourage you to reach out to the History Center um, and we can make connections to make sure you are at the next sewing party. Um, this really is a project um, because it's rooted in history, but we have this tangible, um, interactive, community building component to it um, that it is really emblematic of the work that we try to do at the History Center and in the larger Tompkins County community. Um, yes. And by the way, we call these kitty-thons. Kitty-thons. Yes. Uh, so if you would like to be involved in the next kitty-thon, uh, we would absolutely love to have you. Um, Organizations like ours, projects like these, are so reliant on community support and community volunteers. And so I guess I would like to say thank you to you, Phyllis, and everybody who has been a part of our Kitty Thons for all of the work in helping build Caesar to this point. And we're looking, we're very excited for continuing and growing his presence in the future. We have completed 600 kitties. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, and hopefully there will be another 600 more. Well, we just had another run of 200 printed, so. Okay, excellent. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in uh, this afternoon or whenever you're watching to um, the second episode of our Discovery History Channel produced by the History Center in Tompkins County. My guest today has been Phyllis and we have been talking Ithaca Kitty. Now uh, we're gonna close with a clip that um, was really an exciting discovery for us at the History Center. Uh, it sort of shows the ways that we actively discover new pieces of our history. Um, and this was while we were building our new exhibit for the uh, Tompkins, uh, Tompkins Courtland, the, goodness, the TC3 School Extension um, out in Dryden. Uh, we have a new exhibit in our atrium and uh, we were watching some videos on the groundbreaking and one of the groundbreaking videos opened up with Rod Serling, of, um, uh, who most of you should know and is a Binghamton native. Uh, and he is narrating a video about why the TC3 opening is so important. And uh, wouldn't you know it, the opening scene featured our very own eight square schoolhouse, which uh, is run and operated by the History Center in Tompkins County. And so I hope you enjoy watching this as much as we did discovering it. The Little Red Schoolhouse. Is it just a one-room relic from a quieter, simpler past? Not really. 
one teacher. Youngsters ranged in age from 5 to 15 years. The children of farmers, tradesmen, laborers, craftsmen, professionals. Good morning, children. Good morning, teacher. We will now begin the singing of America. The one-room schoolhouse was a hectic, noisy, busy place. And it had to be. It was the cramped battleground of an educational revolution, a revolution that continues today. At the beginning of the 19th century, Americans decided to break from tradition. Today it is the modern community college, Tompkins Portland. 